So we got some really big news and finally for the first time ever Blizzard has officially acknowledged that the Shadowlands sucked, that the Jailer was a terrible villain, that the Helm of Domination being turned into the Burger King crown was a terrible idea and that they really messed up with the entire afterlife setting. All this info comes from the general manager of the Warcraft franchise where they had outlined how Shadowlands led them to an unprecedented loss of players, what mistakes they made, how they plan to do better in the future even more interestingly, for the first time ever they gave us some official subscriber graphs that by some calculations could right now be as high as 7 million active players at the moment which is a really crazy number if true and all that comes from the recent work they did on the constant updates and communication. So what did Blizzard actually say? Did you know you can play WoW on your phone? You can check in on your characters, you can play the game, you can even do minor things you don't really want to do on the PC. With this video sponsor, Awesome, allowing you to control your PC with your phone completely free, available for Windows, iOS, and Android. Awesome is incredibly easy to use. Check out my link in the description, download the PC and the phone version, and just connect it. The free version itself is amazing as you can control your desktop, transfer files, but the real deal is the game version. It has custom keyboards for various games other than just WoW and you can enjoy AFK gaming at any time, anywhere with game sound. Make sure to use my code Doron to get 7 days completely free only for the first 200 people. They also got a smart plug to turn off your PC at any time as well as hot sales with up to 40% off on pro and game versions. Check out Awesome. I know hating on the Shadowlands lore is like really beating a dead horse by this point in time, but I really want to resurrect that horse once again for this video as we actually got Blizzard sort of apologizing for the huge mess that actually happened. So this is not actually a Doomer video, in fact really this is the most optimistic thing that Blizzard has really done and it kinda shows us that this time it really is going to be different. We've kinda been saying this for quite a while and then it just ends up being a cycle you know hype and then everyone complains and hype and once again but seriously this time things really are different like nothing like this has ever happened before the most important thing of course is the entire leadership of blizzard was changed they were bought by microsoft they got entirely different ceos policies strategies and most importantly for the lore side the biggest change ever happened quite recently as you obviously know, Chris Messer is back, the guy that he essentially created the Warcraft franchise and the previous narrative director that was responsible for Shadowlands and most of Dragonflight storyline has departed. This was already kind of evident on BlizzCon, I mean the guy was obviously not there and it was pretty obvious Chris has some really big plans for Warcraft for quite a while. I know there was an entire talk about how you can't really blame one single guy and in a way I agree, I mean it is obviously a team effort but let's be real, if you're the lead narrative guy, the one in charge, you take all the credits if the story is good and you also take all the blame if the story ends up being bad. Also people say you know, Chris Madsen had written some bad storylines in the past and I can kinda agree but these bad storylines that he had written really weren't that bad and there were even occasions when he really did mess up with the lore, he retconned some things and he actually came to the forums, apologized for making a mistake, actually fixed some things like he acknowledged that he made this mistake. However, with previous leadership this was not the case whatsoever, I mean some storylines were just straight out disastrous, gigantic plot holes all over the place, nonsensical one-liners, random cinematics and not one single acknowledgement that they actually messed up on any single aspect. I feel like on top of the mess there was the entire storyline of Shadowlands, what infuriated people more is how Blizzard at the time never actually acknowledged that no one is actually liking what they're writing and instead they were constantly in public you know with the edit how they're flawless, that the writing is genius, the people are just being toxic, you know, the community is being toxic. However, finally that actually happened and even though we got like five different changes with the World Soul Saga, this might be one of the most important ones, for the lore especially, as it really shows us in action that they're planning on bringing Warcraft back home. So the news is that most recently the senior vice president and the general manager of the Warcraft franchise led a presentation on a game developer conference and he was reflecting on the 30 years of Warcraft. 
as a franchise and they essentially outlined what worked and what didn't work throughout the years, in this point highlighting the successes and the failures of the series from Legion to Dragonflight and interestingly enough they finally after a really long time showed us some subscriber trends which once again is really optimistic and good news for World of Warcraft as a game. Referring to the storyline most importantly they realized that the people didn't like the afterlife setting, they didn't like that it wasn't accessible, they didn't vibe with any of the zones, they realized that the new antagonist was not well developed at all or really that interesting and even further highlighted by the fact that they showed us a picture in this presentation of Sylvanas shooting an arrow with the jailer which you might remember was one of the most outrageous lore moments from a few years back which of course shows us that they also got common sense and they realized how ridiculous some storyline moments really were. Even more interestingly they understand that many well known story characters were completely diminished and sort of ruined throughout the Shadowlands. So for example Bane essentially just sitting around doing nothing, Nathanos not even doing anything even though he was in the cinematic, then Bolvar the guy from the legendary cinematic that sacrificed himself as a hero and it was a mystery for the longest time, just running left and right, barely doing anything of importance, and of course, most importantly, them ruining Artis Metal. Personally, I'm kinda glad they never actually brought Artis back or did anything significant with him during Shadowlands, but the entire, you know, just shooing him away as this destroyed soul essence really felt ridiculous and unsatisfying, and of course, I mean, the most outrageous thing was that they then, on top of all this, called this the end of the saga as if they could just accomplish something insanely genius like they use the most iconic character of the Warcraft series the guy we played as in both human and undead form back in Warcraft 3 the guy we got to the Lich King throne the main antagonist during the most popular phase of World of Warcraft and then they turned his legendary helm of domination into a Burger King crown and gave it to some random character that they just made up if you weren't about the past you would barely even recognize who this guy was potentially the the most relevant character ever and then having this be like the crowning event of the entire history of Warcraft like this is the end of the saga everything you play to until this point. On top of that of course you got the ridiculous shenanigans with Sylvanas switching plans without any actual story development to back it up because the lead guy really loved her character. You can kind of see how that really <laughs> pissed off people and this is not just my opinion I mean they showed us on that exact same conference how Shadowlands really messed them up as well and how they had an unprecedented loss of players during these events and how the damage was really done. Furthermore, they also realized that the gaps of content were pretty big in the past as let's be real, we only got one single content patch in Shadowlands, the first one was just an extension of them all and finally after all this time Blizzard acknowledged that they messed up with the lack of transparency and that the players didn't feel heard at all. The best thing is though they actually came up with an action plan and they sort of already started implementing it and it showed them what helped them recover some players and I definitely agree, I mean most of this is actually true. They realize that the settings like the afterlife or Zerat Mortis just doesn't really work, doesn't vibe with the players. They know WoW is all about high fantasy and approachable settings, something much more down to earth which is going to be happening in the World Soul Saga. They want to build a world where the world itself is the star but the players are only heroes. We are not out there foiling 100,000 year old plans and you know shooting everyone with our weapons. They realize that an expansion needs key story characters that are going to tie in naturally without being diminished or useless or just there but not actually doing anything like in the Shadowlands and they realize that epic events are key but conflicts being simple is also key. Before we look at how this is exactly what they're going to be doing in the World Soul Saga, let's also check out the subscriber graphs that they showed us as well as we got some super interesting graphs that kind of show us what is going on behind the scenes. So they haven't actually given us hard numbers like they did in the past but some people can actually calculate that based on the previous information and the graphs are essentially as you would expect. I mean huge spike when the expansion is launched and then a drop off during the lull between expansions. I mean this is only natural. However the Shadowlands graph can shock them as well as it went pretty much exactly as we had experienced it and the damage was quite significant. So obviously the start of Shadowlands was super hype and then it had a really really sharp drop off much sharper than they had expected and what got the fire burning under Blizzard is that they realized the players were not really picking the game up at all 
during the release of Dragonflight and actually it didn't really have that good of performance. It was only post BlizzCon, so a few months back when the World Soul Saga was announced that they started a season of Discovery and all the recent updates and then the graph just started going crazy and it seemed like they had actually surpassed the release of Dragonflight itself and this is what gave them confidence to continue pushing the exact same strategy. Some calculations showed us that currently WoW might have over 7 million active players and it had around 4 million prior to the release of Dragonflight. And now I just want to say that this is more reflective of the gameplay and the recent World Soul Saga hype than anything other than that as well as all the classic things they started implementing as the storyline of Dragonflight was really not that good. It kind of continued the same thing as the Shadowlands. I mean Dragonflight's storyline was not a disaster obviously but it was incredibly dull. It wasn't interesting whatsoever and they also realized that as well which is why they decided to reveal three giant expansions to us all of them being exactly as they had outlined in the previous strategy high fantasy and approachable as all the expansions are obviously Azeroth well base involving void trolls orcs elves humans you know the already established work of races the world is the star the players are the heroes is literally the description of the world soul saga as Azeroth the world soul is the name of the entire saga and we are here getting the visions and just kind of discovering things and doing our best to see how we can help her and what we can do to save Azeroth they got key characters that they had recently revealed for the war within so Anduin, Troll, Illyria, Gazlo, and obviously Zelatad as an antagonist, but an actually interesting antagonist as she has had nearly a decade of buildup. Also simple conflicts but epic events, so obviously Zelatad is spending something crazy. We're going to get the Void invasion, the Titans coming to Azeroth, but here we're going to be dealing with the Nubians, the Light Humans, the Void invasion, where we're going to be defending our home. We're not going to be going into the hell itself and fighting the Jailer's crazy soul army. Most importantly, they had realized the community aspect that is important and how they plan to always have something going on with the game and something new even if it is a minor patch and most importantly they're kind of showing us that they care in action as this is literally the reason I'm making this video they saw the knowledge that they messed up as much as they really can as a company obviously you know same face I mean no one was thinking they were just going to come out officially with a public post and they're going to just say the jailer sucked we're going to rent on the entire lore that happened in the past five years but they sort of you know gradually slipped this info on a conference that you know this was bad but we definitely plan to do better. Thank you for watching. Check out the top 10 strongest WoW characters updated for the World Soul Saga by clicking on the screen and check out my video on ancient Greek colonies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!